meet 2030 decarbonization, which everybody agrees that we have to do this, uh, meet this target. So what do we do with this? India is one of the fastest growing economy and the third largest consumer of primary energy in the world after the US and China. So we consume a lot of energy. So we have to worry about it and we have to think about it. India's fuel energy security will remain vulnerable until alternate fuels are developed based on renewable feedstock. Uh, the session just before this uh, was, uh, many things were talked about is like, as a country, we are self-sufficient for feedstock. We have enough carbon than what we consume. That was a very interesting point which was brought out, and I definitely agree with that we have enough carbon than we consume. It is just how do we use it and which technologies are used for achieving those carbon neutrality. So achieving energy security and transitioning uh, to a low carbon economy is critical for a growing nation like us. The energy demand in our country is rising, but rising concern over climate change and the rapid depletion of fossil fuel have prompted the search of alternate fuels. The economic growth of the country will further increase industry base and vehicular uh, population, will increase the demand of the uh, related fuels. Maybe it is hydrogen, it's methanol, or ethanol, or diesel, or petrol. So there are various fuels where demand will go further. So can you go to the next slide, please? Yeah, I'm sorry. So this is just, I don't know whether this slide is visible. I'm sorry about this, uh, I think. Uh, can you see it? Yeah, it's visible. Okay. So it's basically what we're trying to say is, I'm looking at focusing on very uh, specific sectors on uh, GHG emission. So transport sector is what is right now the focus for us, uh, which is contributing to 87%. And uh, so biofuel is at the center, which talks about, uh, takes care of energy security, also low carbon, and also uh, social. So these are the dimensions which are handled when you look for uh, work on uh, biofuel or when the uh, government is looking at biofuel program. We can go to the next slide, please. So basically here, I just put the key drivers. What we talk about is uh, India is growing in all industrial segments. It's not only the energy. So if you look at industrial growth, India has uh, is growing. So why as a company we talk about biochemicals as well? Because biofuel is not the only thing which we are focusing on. So biomass is a feedstock for biofuel and biochemical both. So growing consumer awareness is leading uh, to use of in, uh, like ingredients of biochemicals. People are looking at green carbon more. And there are sustainable sourcing issues uh, also and the government initiatives. In today's situation, we have a lot of initiatives as Chairman said, already said it, like the program started long back, but now we see the impact. The biofuel policy, bioethanol policy, uh, green hydrogen policies, all are the impact of uh, as, uh, like government initiatives. The tightening of regulation for use of hazardous chemical, which is focusing towards more biochemicals, and favorable policies across globe. It's not only India which is focusing on these policies, but across globe. So when we work with various companies like uh, MNCs who are looking at India to get green carbon. So this is very important that as a country, we understand that we have enough resources as a green carbon, and we tap them properly. And so what are the opportunities? <coughs> Reducing import dependence, that's what we are trying to do it for fossil fuel as key raw material and, plat as, and also platform chemicals. So it's not only the energy, but we must also focus on uh, the platform chemicals. So we need to work on uh, kind of various R&D space. Technology development is important because feedstock is one thing which we focus, but apart from feedstock, technologies have to be worked around each feedstock separately. Then uh, like capacity addition for biofuel, especially chemicals, and bio-based chemicals. So these are the all growth uh, drivers which will take our country where we will be making in India for the world. Investment in supply chain and logistic is also very important because I think we have uh, plants where you can convert into biofuels or biochemicals, but what about feedstock, which is critical here? Yeah. So this is just an illustration of uh, what is happening in 20% EBP uh, program, which is helping in three dimension, benefit to the environment, benefit to the society at large, and benefit to the economy. Because when you are uh, stopping import of uh, uh, fuel, you are definitely helping the economy of the country. 
So this is just to show that, yes, bio 20% uh, EBB program is helping in country in various dimensions. We can uh, discuss other things, but this is immediate, which can be done. Sugar is grown in the country. Sugarcane is grown in the country. Sugar is produced, and we have surplus sugar. So why not convert into the fuel and reduce our energy bill? So that's really uh, helpful as of now. But yes, there are issues which need to be addressed as we go forward. Yeah, next slide. So uh, these are some uh, other uh, issues which uh, like biofuel program has been addressing. Uh, I think this is kind of, uh, it's like uh, what I see is uh, you stopped uh, import of ethanol, duty on import of ethanol, which is very interesting. So what government is trying to say is you import ethanol from all other part of the world and use it for your chemicals so that ethanol produced in the country is used for biofuel programs. This is interesting. But also we need to focus on how do we take care of our feedstock. We should not allow our feedstock to be exported to other countries because that will help other countries to achieve their net zero or net carbon goal earlier than us. And we will be behind the like targets. So that's what is also to be thought about it. And we go to the next. So what are the key levers? Uh, like uh, we, uh, government started, uh, announced the juice syrup and be heavy molasses to be converted into ethanol, which is quite good because you have surplus sugar. What do you do with? <coughs> and uh, this helps us to, like uh, farmers, to get more uh, income per acre of their cane. Uh, and biomass to 2G ethanol is like the technology which is being happening, evolving. But there are, uh, there are various kind of schemes which are available. But I think this has to still see the day of the light. Uh, for industry like us, we are closely observing because it is very, very capital. And, and so, so this uh, kind of a scope for Indian uh, engineering companies to develop other uh, kind of mechanism which can help reduce the capex for 2G. Because right now, most of the equipments used in 2G are imported. So there is a scope for kind of doing more work on this. Damage grain to ethanol is also announced, uh, like uh, supported by government. The FPD is supporting this uh, scheme with uh, various things. So these are schemes which are helping to achieve 20% blending uh, targets. Yeah. So this is why I just wanted to talk about a success story, because this is one pilot example which we can consider for other biofuels which are going to be coming in uh, near future because each fuel is important. Not a single fuel can help us achieve our targets. Yeah. So on advanced fuel, when we talk about, I think we should also talk about various uh, projects which are come up for uh, 2G in various part of the countries. So they are vari at various stages, maybe some plants, some are demonstration. So there are efforts being taken by government and the industries to come to this uh, stage. But a lot needs to be done because uh, as of now, um, there are challenges. The technology, feedstock are the major challenges. Logistic is another one. So we need to really take care of these issues when we are demonstrating. This will come because there is no second uh, thought because biomass has to get converted into the biofuel or biochemicals because word needs a different feedstock, yeah. <coughs> so I just wanted to say that in the country, not a problem statement, uh, that's my mistake. So I just wanted to again emphasize that we have abundant agriculture and forest resources. We are largest producer of milk, pulses, jute, second largest producer of sugar cane, rice, wheat, and cotton, unused cropland and favorable climate, which helps us to think about what can be done next. We have a remarkable talent and uh, a talent pool to develop new technologies. This can definitely help us to uh, uh, get potential opportunities. We can, we have that waste to energy or chemicals, that's for tomorrow. A lot of things have been done, but a lot needs to be also taken care of and to be done. And circular economy is what we have to think about. Like when we consider ourselves, when we get a, a stick of sugar cane, it's not only sugar cane. It comes with sugar, water, and fiber. So I need to valorize like, each part of the sugar cane. It's like water has to be completely recycled and reused. The fiber has to be also 
used right now everybody is burning as a fiber that as a power, for power generation but that's a very very wasteful use we need to really think of developing other products which convert this fiber into valuable products sugar is converted to sugar and ethanol so that has already been valorized then you get co2 which should also be converted into the product so it's a lot of things a lot of areas for people to think and work around and yeah we can go to the next so this is what we call it. When you look at a sugar, uh, sugar plant, it has bagasse, which is fiber. Then you have juice, syrup, and molasses. And you have press mud. The press mud is the bio manure. We convert into bio fertilizer today, which is again used by the farmers. And this can now be used as bio CNG, because that's the program which government has also announced. And, and in two years' time, every sugar factory uh, has to convert their press mud into biogas. So that's under Satat program. Then juice, syrup, and molasses all can be converted into ethanol. And when you do fermentation, I, I uh, like personally never liked sugar to ethanol conversion because 50% carbon goes to the atmosphere. So this is the area which all of us need to really think capturing the CO2, utilizing as a carbon feedstock. So this is very important. A lot of work has been done and is being done. So we need to really think of green methanol or other products which can use this carbon for uh, capturing it. Then bagas to 2G plant, 2G ethanol. When we look at uh, 2G ethanol is 2G sugars for us because this sugar can be converted to various other products. So we should look at it as a value chain, not only for fuel, but for biochemicals as well. Yeah, next please. So, so just wanted to put up there are opportunities to work around uh, green technologies like we have uh, climate change as a center, but emission reduction is part, we need to really focus on when the technologies are developed. Stop crop burning. So that's why we need a technology to make sure that uh, crop burning is stopped. Carbon capture and utilize for, and storage is the area where we should look at and developing the technology because once we have the whole integration, <coughs> then only the technology will be successful because only making bioethanol or biodiesel will not help us. You need to focus on bio CNG. Then also, maybe from the same uh, refinery concept, you have biofuels, uh, alternate biofuels like hydrogen. Then uh, there are sustainable biofuels which are talked about, green methanol, because we do get CO2 and you generate hydrogen. You can also look at green methanol, why not? then green hydrogen. So these are the green one, the area where a lot of technologies development has to be done. Blue, a lot of things have already been done. So I just wanted to put across that uh, these things have to be done and government is supporting in each area. So a lot of thought has gone through because it's really important when you read through and I actually liked uh, what uh, our minister, uh, Dr. Mr. Gadkari said about few, I think few weeks back that he's imagining one each farmer has a water well and he has rooftop with a solar panel and the water is converted to hydrogen and he has a pump where he can fuel it. It's imagination, but it's a really important thing. What we're talking about, a very, very kind of decentralized system where each and every part of like uh, everybody is, social network is taking part in our energy security and decarbonization goal. Maybe it's possible, it could be future. And I also like this film which has been put into the website of bio, uh, this word fuel, uh, future fuel. I don't know whether everybody has seen it, which uh, shows that uh, the kids of the school in 2040, how they're talking about. I think if you've not seen it, please see it. That was a very, very nice film which has been put in the website of our future fuel, which talks about how in 2013, uh, 23 or 24, people struggle to develop these technologies. And it's really nice narrative. So we are uh, looking forward for a great future. All of us need to put in our efforts to go there. Yeah, next slide, I think it's all done. This talks about what we do. It's like, so we take uh, sugarcane from the farmers. So we are associated with uh, 32,000 farmers. And the sugar is, uh, a crush, we crush 18,500 uh, tons per day uh, sugar cane. And the juice syrup is cut, uh, 35 to 40 percent juice is diverted for sugar, uh, for ethanol production. The rest is uh, used for sugar production. And after uh, ethanol production, uh, we get by uh, this uh, spend wash, which is kind of used for energy. And uh, press mud is again used for biofertilizer. And CO2 is the only 
part which we have still, we are still looking for technologies where we can integrate our CO2 capturing and converting into the products. Yeah, next slide. This again talks about that we are not stopping at ethanol. We, uh, in the other fact, uh, unit, which is our chemical unit, we convert ethanol into the biochemicals. So we make almost 20, 25 products from ethanol. So ethanol is our feedstock. As a company, we are net importer of ethanol. Uh, ethanol, whatever we produce, is only so, uh, given to biofuel program. And uh, so there are opportunities. This is what we want to say, that as a biorefinery, we see opportunity in each uh, green carbon. So there are the possibilities. Thank you. I think this is the light. Thank you. Yes. Sorry. From sugar to ethanol, you're releasing carbon into the environment. So is the whole ethanol program so carbon this, positive or carbon negative? So this is uh, important. In next two years, every distillery, everybody has to put up carbon capture plant. So there's a technology requirement of carbon capturing and utilizing. Absolutely. That's the point. Hmm. Yeah. It has to be done. And it is a mandate for all the distilleries to put carbon uh, capturing plants. But nobody does till date. No, no. Uh, now two years time has been given, so people are doing it. That's compulsion. So How will they capture that carbon? It's carbon capture. There is uh, like Praj has plants. Compressed carbon, there is no market. So it is by compulsion that you will ca capture it, keep it. What you will do with carbon? So there are missions which are working on methanol. So if you convert CO2 to methanol, that's it. Yeah. So that's why I t spoke about various technologies where we have to really work on to make sure that we completely close the cycle. But for our industry, like sugar or ethanol, CO2 is coming from plant. My plant is capturing CO2. But for the steel and iron and other power industry, your CO2 is not captured in the plant. So as a whole, if you calculate, it is still <coughs> net zero. So that's still the calculation is net zero, but it has to be net positive. So that's what is next step. No, CCU and CCUS has not been commercially viable so far anywhere. I think the unit, the unit calls for a, uh, then uh, looking at it, how do they do CCU and CCUS? No, but you see what uh, she so mentioned the about... Uh, have been associated with CCU for a long time, ever since its inception. No, in fact, I was the, fo uh, the crook who <laughs> converted CCS into CCUS to buy time for ourselves. It is something like that. Yeah, it is something like that when uh, ethanol started, molasses to ethanol, there was no technology to utilize your waste spent. There was no technology. So we fall short on technology. So let's be accepted that we don't have technology. We are not ready with all technology. That's very important. We talk about doing things, the technology should also be there. Okay, thanks. Thank you very much. Sorry.